Tonight on Animal House, the SPCA steps in to save cows on the brink of starvation. Why are you being so difficult with me? There's five there that I'm really concerned yep. about. I would just about put them close to emaciated. Two young puppies are left to fend for themselves in a filthy rabbit hutch. Another day or so and these guys probably wouldn't have survived. And a kitten gets himself in a dangerous jam. I think it's broken its leg. It's freezing cold. The SPCA is in the Waikato to investigate a report about starving animals on a farm. Received a call about um, some thin cattle and horses, so we're just here to, to have a look. And indeed, there are some thin cattle. Recent floods have destroyed much of the grazing. Pasture's extremely minimal. Um, there's little evidence of some form of hard feed being fed. Um, if you want to look at them rushing over, they're thinking we've got food for them. Some of them are shocking. Many of the cattle appear to be severely undernourished. I haven't actually come across cows this skinny for a good couple of months. Vicky spots a black and white cow that looks like it may have more problems than just being underweight. There's just something not right happening with that cow. I'm not... Just the way it's breathing and... Yeah, I'm not sure. I think maybe she's in calf. But this cow doesn't look like a happy mother-to-be. It's all right. Vicky turns her attention to the horses. It's all right. They look OK, maybe, you know, a little light. Not happy with you, though. The gelding looks in a bad way, with clear signs of neglect. It doesn't look healthy whatsoever. I mean, you can see the, the prominent backbone and, and the sunkenness around and the pelvic area it should have a lot more weight on there. Vicky then makes a puzzling discovery. It's all fresh food. That's just really odd. There, there's horse feed in here. There's a skinny horse out there. There's haylage over here. But there's skinny cows out there. Um, it's just, just yeah, a, a, little, a little odd. With no one home, she is left with no option but to leave a notice. If I don't hear from them, say, by midday, midday tomorrow, um, I'll organise a bet to come down. At a state house in central Auckland, the SPCA is following up a call about some potentially abandoned animals. We've just arrived at this property here. Um, there's reports of two puppies that are uh, being kept in a rabbit hutch. So we're just going to go and have a look and see what the story is. Neighbours have reported that nobody has been on the property for some time. Doesn't even look like anybody's living here. Let's go and have a look and see what we can find. Oh, here's a hutch. Hey, little puppies. Hello, little puppies. It's just ridiculous that somebody thinks that this is acceptable. Puppies at this age can't regulate their own body temperature. They still need mum to keep them warm. Um, so, you know, it might be all right to keep them in here for a couple of hours, um, but definitely not an overnight thing or anything like that. Go on, puppies! It's unclear how long these puppies have been abandoned, but Herb's not leaving them another minute. Oh, jump down. They've got no water in here uh, other than the rodent sipper bottles, um, and that's just ridiculous, you know. They're designed for rabbits and rats. The remnants of food that's in here is wet with the rain and it's adult food. Um, you know, the whole situation is, is just wrong. Herb is taking these puppies to the animal village, but before they go anywhere, they need a meal. Oh, I've just got some food here for these little guys because I don't know how long they've been without food. Let's see how hungry they are. Here you go, puppy. Oh, look, that's just unreal, you know, for little guys like that. I mean, who knows? It could be a couple of days since they've eaten. That amount of food there should really be for perhaps four puppies, 
three times a day. You know, that took probably 45 seconds for them to empty that bowl. You know, and they're still looking for more. I'm just so glad we got here now. Let's get you checked out. We got some full bellies, full tummies. Another day or so, and these guys probably wouldn't have survived. In South Auckland, the SBCA is on a mission to rescue a cat in a serious jam. Just had a call about a kitten that's stuck in a swimming pool fence, so we're just going to go and check out what the story is. Yes, down through this fence here. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. The kitten has become trapped in a pool fence, but it's hard to see exactly how. It's a contorted bundle of fur and limbs. It's gone through and somehow got itself jammed between the wood and the fence. My wife heard the cat when she was hanging the washing out here and uh, this morning it's... I was away at the time, so when I come home she says, oh, we've got a rescue mission on our hands. Nobody knows how long the kitten has been here. Astrid suspects it may have done itself a serious injury. I think it's broken its leg. It's freezing cold. I'm just going to probably get a crowbar and just take that piece of wood away. Do you have a crowbar handy by any chance? Yes, I have. Oh, fantastic. The kitten is cold, which means it could be in more serious danger. Astrid needs to get it out fast. It's all right, Puss. What have you done? But loosening the board isn't enough to free the frightened cat. I can get you to maybe hang on to the crowbar and I'll see if I can... So, with the help of Bob, Astrid gives it one more shot. There we go. And it's free. There we go. Hey, I'll go and see the vet and just check up that everything's OK. Bob believes this kitten is a stray. Fairly big rental area around here, and people leave their houses and leave the cats behind, and then, they, of course, they breed, and uh, then it's just left to us people left behind to sort of clear it up. Yeah, I want to get this guy back to base pretty quickly so we can just check that leg out. The two pups found in appalling living conditions are about to be assessed by a vet. What have you got for us? Oh, these two little guys were left in a rabbit hutch. Um, no food, no water. I don't know how many days. Um, okay. They may well be dehydrated. Okay. Fairly bright, fairly active at this stage. You're standing there, buddy. Let's have a little look at you, sweetie. They're a little on the dehydrated side, but not dreadful. A wee bit pot bellied. Well, they just had a big feed. Okay. Um, they ate oh. half a can of puppy food okay. each. Okay, we'll pull the other one out. Come on, little one. There's a few <laughs> minor little war wounds, but nothing that's not going to heal pretty quickly with the right care. And the good news with these two, um, Herb, is they're going to bounce back probably pretty quickly now oh, with the right, in the right situation with the right care. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. What are you guys doing? Just you are. You're very happy now, aren't you? That's much better. Should we give you some names? What about Bugs and Jessica, eh? seeing as you were found in the rabbit hutch? Herb has left a notice at the property. If no one contacts him within seven days, the pups will be put up for adoption. There you go, that's much better, isn't it? Loads better than the stinky old rabbit hutch. Vicky and an SPCA volunteer have arranged to meet a vet at the Waikato farm. Hey, Cara. Hello, how are you, how are you doing? Good. Vicky believes that the animals here are starving. There's um, probably about uh, five or so animals that are in pretty rough shape. But when the owners arrive, Vicky struggles to convince them of her concerns. Why are you being so difficult with me? There's five there that I'm really concerned yep. about. I would just about put them close to emaciated. I got, I got the same excuses that I seem to get on a daily basis from people. We've had a drought, we've had a flood and um, food's too expensive. Dry feed that recently arrived at the property is too little, too late. They claimed they couldn't get a feed truck in um, before that because of the flood, which is incorrect because I myself have been down this road two or three weeks, um, even a month before my visit last week. Vicky wants these animals fed properly or removed. You can surrender those five to us, otherwise I remove them, or um, I can give you 12 hours and you can, you can move them on to somewhere else for grazing. Meanwhile, there has been a development with the black and white cow Vicky thought was pregnant. 
This cow here has been down since yesterday morning. She apparently calved sometime over the night and hasn't been able to get up. Uh, Condition-wise, she's pretty poor, which means she's got no energy to even get up. She's extremely hungry. Uh, she's got no food or water anywhere near her. Things don't look good for this new mother. On the Waikato farm, the problems with the starving animals are going from bad to worse. Kara is examining the collapsed mother cow. A cow that's just calved overnight has a little loss of feeling in her hind legs, so we're going to treat her with, for that as well as um, give her some, some energy straight into the vein, some dextrose into the vein, and um, as well as some calcium magnesium to help, help with that. The farmers deny responsibility. Well, apparently it's not their cow. Um, they say that it came during the flood when it could walk over the fence, so... I don't know. They claim to be feeding it. However, uh, we gave it water and it was... I've never seen 40 litres of water go down an animal so fast in my life. The SPCA has done all that it can for this cow. The next 24 hours will decide whether it pulls through. The condition at the cow inn is, is quite serious, but it is um, something that, that happens in, in calving cows, especially with big calves. There are um, lots of cases that do get up, but there are several that um, don't ever make it up afterwards. Meanwhile, Vicky is removing the thin horse spotted on the first visit. This one's in appalling condition. He's virtually emaciated. He's an old boy, so he really needed feed and a cover on and things like that. And he's had none of that, unfortunately. It turns out that this is a rescue horse that the farmers were supposed to be caring for. The same excuses are getting thrown at us about the weather, about the hard feed being expensive, about the recession. Um, hey, I'm living through that too. We all are, but my animals are fed, you know, and, and most of the New Zealand public feed their animals. The SPCA will return to this farm tomorrow to assess the cow that's down and to decide the fate of the remaining animals. There has been a crushing blow for Bugs and Jessica, the puppies removed from the rabbit hutch. They are being in contact with a, another pup that's had parvo. So it's not, um, it's not super good for them at the moment. Um, obviously, we don't know whether they were up to date with any vaccinations. It's highly unlikely that they were. Parvo is a deadly and highly contagious virus. The puppies will need to spend two weeks in isolation before it's known whether they have contracted the fatal disease. Parvo virus is a, a virus that affects the, the young, um, the old and the weak dogs. It's something that's lives in the soil and tends to come out in summer in the warmer months. So it's something that's, that's pretty crucial um, to vaccinate against. Their only contact will be with vet nurses, and even that must be brief. Puppies of this age um, need socialisation. They want to have human contact, but because parvo can be quite contagious, you don't want to spend too much time in here. It's going to be a little bit touch and go for these little guys. Hopefully they'll pull through it, but it's, um, it's a pretty crucial time for them. Astrid fears the cat rescued from under the swimming pool fence may have a serious injury. I'm a bit concerned about um, this little kitten. I don't know how long it was wedged in the fence for um, or how long the circulation was cut off, so we're going to get it checked by the vet now to see what the extent of the injuries are. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Just got a kitten that was stuck in a pool fence. It was basically wedged in the fence. Um, there's three sort of metal squares and it's tried to go through all three at once, basically, and got itself tangled. Got itself tangled up, OK. Does it seem lively in other respects? Yeah, yeah. It wanted to escape a couple of times from me, but so it seems OK. It's but, friendly um, enough. It's just the leg I'm a bit concerned about. This leg is quite swollen here from just about from the stifle down through here. Yeah. And the hock is... There's a bit of fluid in the hock as well. Now, that could just be because of circulation, um, and it's just got a bit of fluid mm. building up under the skin. Has it been walking around on it since? Um, hobbling, hobbling, just in the cage, yeah. So it's not actually that painful. I actually suspect it hasn't broken it at all. I think it probably is just a circulatory problem. So normally, once, the, once they are freed, then that will often just settle down on its own. Peter is optimistic the kitten is out of danger. If it doesn't settle down, we can always X-rat as well. OK? Great news, thank you. Not a problem. It will be monitored for the next seven days. If no owner turns up and it makes a full recovery, it will be put up for adoption. 
Tara and Vicky return to check on the thin cowl that collapsed when calving. So we'll just check and see how much improvement we've had with that treatment that we gave. If we haven't seen enough improvement, then it's probably going to be best to, to put her down. I spoke to the, the husband this morning and she hasn't moved. OK. So. All right. And they were able to keep food and water in front of her last night? Yeah. OK. Yeah. After a brief assessment, Kara has a verdict. She's probably a bit duller than she was yesterday. Absolutely no response in trying to get her to get up and to use those hind legs at all. She's, you know, she's giving up now. So um, we've done all we possibly can in regards to saving her. So um, a decision has been made to euthanize her. The SPCA's attention now focuses on the remaining cattle. I had a a really good chat with the husband. He's made a, a huge effort in trying to find grazing for the thin cattle. Um, he's had no luck. So we've come to an agreement that he will take 10 to 15 of the better looking cattle to the sales on Saturday and the others will remain on the property and I will keep monitoring them and ensuring that, you know, their body condition improves. With fewer cattle on the property, Vicky hopes the remaining animals will have a better chance of putting on weight. Quarantine time is over, so it's D-Day for Bugs and Jess, the pups uplifted from the rabbit hutch. So these little guys have been in isolation now for two weeks. Um, they came in contact with a puppy that had parvo. Um, they've um, not shown any signs of, um, of the disease so far, that doesn't mean they haven't got it. And so we're going to parvo test them now and hopefully they'll get a clear run. Hey Rocky. Hi. Alright, so we're hoping these are going to be negative and these guys can go straight through to surgery. The owner has surrendered them. However, if they test positive for parvo, they will not be able to be rehomed. Right, so this is Jess, is it? Yep. Oops. Okay. Oh, we should be able to see within... A minute. It's an anxious wait for all concerned. Bugs and Jessica's future hinges on the results of tests for the deadly parvo virus. Right, so there we have the results from Bugs, and we've got a negative. We've just got one line. So Bugs is good to go. Thank you. Just got to wait for your one, don't we? It's going, it's going. So we wait and see if we get one line or two lines. If we get one line like we did on bugs, then we've got a clear negative. Righto, we've got two negatives. Yay. Yay, there we go. Jess and bugs, you're free to go. All clear, good puppies. The puppies are cleared for rehoming and are reunited for the first time in two weeks. After a week at the shelter, nobody has claimed the kitten with the injured leg. So this is the cat that Astrid rescued from the pool fence and we've just given it an examination before it's going through for dissexing. Seems that its leg has recovered perfectly well. In fact, there was no permanent damage at all. So it was a very lucky little kitten. Once it's been dissexed, it can go through into adoption modules and hopefully it'll get a home really, really quickly. Its temperament is excellent. It's purring as I'm holding it. In spite of the fact that I've been pulling its legs around, it's really, really friendly. I don't think it'll have any trouble whatsoever getting a home. Vicky is returning to the Waikato farm. Four weeks ago, the farmers sold 10 of their best cattle, leaving more food for the remaining animals. They're actually looking a lot better. They've still got a wee while to go, but um, I'm actually quite happy. And I see that they've had some more um, silage delivered, which is fantastic. I'm not going to take any further action this time but I will be writing um, a formal written warning, which is also going to be an education tool just to remind them of um, their lack of management through the drought and the, and the flooding, etc. After only days in the SPCA adoption modules, the kitten trapped under the pool fence has a new home and a new name, Bradley. We went down to the SPCA because we've, we wanted a kitten and uh, we had a look at several ones, including Bradley, and we picked him because he 
it was the cuddliest one, and uh, and I just wanted to stay with us. We just fell in love with him, I guess. He now lives with three children who love him and a dog who tolerates him. It only took a week for him to settle with the dog, or the other way around. Although Bradley's relationship with the dog is evolving, his place in the family is cemented. The kids just spend lots of time with him. You know, as soon as they wake up, they go and see the cat. As soon as they're back from school, they go and see the cat. So they just love playing with him. And uh, I know he feels like a, you know, member of the family now. From now on, this should be the only tight squeeze Bradley gets into. While Bradley was rehomed within days, Jess has been in the adoption modules now for six weeks. But today, she too gets a happy ending. Hi, uh... She is about to meet her new owner and her new best dog friend. This is Murphy. He's been uh, feeling a bit lonely. He had a few friends to stay for a month, puppy friends, and he got on really well with him. And so after that, we were like, oh, OK, he's going to need a friend. <laughs> he seemed to like her, and she seemed to like him back. Bugs has a new family, too and a new name. I thought she looked really had a really girly look to her, so I thought she'd suit um, something like Honey, only because I knew whatever name I'd pick, I was going to end up calling her Honey, my Honey anyway. Honey, too, has a new best dog friend. Before she came along, Tommy was sort of acting like a, the old man, you know? But, um, yeah, Honey's come in, and, and now he's, he's kind of, you know, he's got a bit of spring back in his step. She loves playing with the kids. No, she's really good. There are so many um, animals out there that are getting abused and whatnot. I'd like to show my children now, while they're young, how to look after the animals, how to care for the animals and to respect the animals, you know? You look after them and they look after you. you know?